get our special guests inside. But share where you guys are from, what brings you to this conversation, what does mental health mean to you? Texas, let's go Texas. Hi, Darren. Hello. I don't know. I thought I joined early and I was like, oh, no. No, you're fine. You're fine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's like I'm in New York right now and it's finally like breaking 70 degrees. I feel like it's I heard it, it's been very wet and very rainy. Yeah. Very balmy. Are you in LA? I'm in sunny LA. It's getting hot. Boy, I was there like literally two days ago and I was like, I, I miss this. I miss the sun every day. Yeah. <laughs> Just in New York. And uh, yeah, that weather did not do me very well. It so. humbled it will humble you and make you appreciate <laughs> where you live if you live in LA or anywhere sunny. It's true. It's true. You know, got cost and benefit though. You can drink the tap water in New York apparently. Can't do that in LA. So I don't know. I wouldn't even give my stamp of approval for that either. But <laughs> I don't, I don't even... know. When there's the best tap water, drink the tap water. I'm like, uh, okay. But <laughs> I'd rather do like Colorado or somewhere where it's just less, less of everything. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I feel that, definitely. Let me see where Remy is. Some technical difficulties. Darren, say hey, K. Hey, K. One more shout outs. How's everybody doing today? Hi, guys. There she is. Hello. How are you? Hi, Remy. I was having some technical difficulties, but I'm here. Retro get us down. It's all good. How are you today? I am good. How are you on this glorious Sunday? I, am, I told Darren I was feeling good because it's finally broken 70 degrees in New York. So I feel like it's, it's summer. Summer's coming. It's been very wet and kind of gross. Right. I feel it too. It's exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting. OK, so without further ado, <laughs> since we're both we're all in the room um i want to just start with introductions um remy do you want to begin with your intro and then darren will kick it off to you um yes my name is remy bader i am a content creator and curve model um that is my intro but i'm also a size consultant and brand ambassador for victoria's secret pink amazing thank you for thank you for coming today and joining us on this fine sunday of course, I'm happy to be here. And Darren? Oh, it's much. Um, <laughs> I'm Aaron Barnett. I'm an actor. Um, recently, producer, I guess, as well, which is exciting. Um, and I am the, not my words, but I guess the first male celebrity, as they say it, brand ambassador for the gender neutral line for Pink. Um, very, very. <laughs> Um, I feel like I want to like, just like, skeeve out when I call myself celebrity, but those are not my words. So yeah, we're here and we're doing it talking about some mental health today. Own it, own <laughs> it. You, you like own it. That's, that's amazing. Pink has been doing some great things. Um, so to kick off the conversation, I'm going to dive deep as I possibly can with their mental health with you all um, for the next few minutes. And I want to kick things off by just like sharing like we often get kind of looped into speaking about the negatives of ourselves, like the struggles, the sad story, the story of why we're going through what we're going through. But we have to also understand that our mental health drives everything in our lives, our hopes, our dreams, our relationships. And it's important to speak about the things that are actually helping us. Um, so this month, Pink is partnering with their nonprofit partners, which is one of them is Sad Girls Club. And they have established Make Your Move, which is a way to celebrate things that can help boost and protect our mental health that are research backed. And I think it's a really important initiative because there's been a lot of talk about exposure, but like this is something that is not only getting exposure, but it's also in evoking action. So it's super important and, and it's a super positive thing. And on that note, I want to jump into my first question. Whomever feels most inclined or inspired by the first question can answer. What's the most important thing or the biggest thing that you do to protect your mental health? Um, I guess I'll go. Um, right. I feel like not that I, I do a great job of it, but when I do, I think that sleep is probably the most important thing for me. Like it dictates 
my mood, my whole entire day. And I feel like when I do get a good amount of sleep, that helps me. And I feel like also I've turned with working out and like the Peloton specifically, like I do like, I used to do it for like the idea of like burning calories or things like that. Like now I genuinely do it because it just makes my, it makes me, my brain clearer. It makes, if I wake up and I have anxiety, like that's the first thing that I know that will help me. So um, moving my body, whether it's even if I'm just kind of like stuck inside and in like a funk, just going for a walk, like things like that have really helped me and my mental health, especially because like I'm filming videos all day and just inside most of the day. Like it's really important to like remember to get up and move. Yes, that is mm -hmm. so um, I just, everyone's going nuts here in the comments. I just want to take a moment and say hi to everyone and thank you, everyone, for being here. Hey, for, God. For uh, me, Remy, Peace. we're very happy to have you guys. Good to see you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, so same thing on, like, physical activity. I definitely, um, I've learned that I always take it as a coincidence, you know, like, when I'm, I'm, like, if I'm working out a couple of days a week and just maintaining a good activity level, like I'm just in a better place. And then when I don't do it, I'm always wondering like, man, why am I, why is my head so messed up? And then I realize it's really about, it's not just about like physical activity, it's about just like the routine of it, you know, like having something to look forward to every day that you do that like keeps you active is nice. Um, but something else I really feel like has changed a lot for me in the past, like two years, two, three years, um, was the way I wake up in the morning because it used to be and it's really easy to wake up in the morning and the first thing you want to do is look at your phone and you see you have like 15 missed texts you have emails to answer you have stuff to look at as look at on social media and it's very easy to just feel like you're already behind and catching up when you do that you know like looking at oh <clears throat> on Instagram why am I not in Mykonos like this person why am I not fit like this person why am I not stylish and on the street like like whatever you know so instead of doing that i would w I'd wake up and I, I i'm not perfect on this i try to be but waking up in like the first hour hour i wake up i um i don't look at my phone and i sit in bed and before i get out of bed i i say like thank you for like 10 things like you know my 10 fingers my 10 toes my two eyes my two ears like the small things that like every day you know, like you're like, you, we kind of take for granted when you have them, but then you think like not everyone has two arms and two legs. And like, these are things that like you, when you start small, like they, small, but they're actually really big throughout the day. The problems that I face are just a little bit smaller and easier to handle. Um, so just starting with small, like measures of gratitude when I wake up really makes the whole day a little bit easier. And if that makes sense. No, it makes complete sense. I feel like that's, my answer looks so much worse than yours. That was such a good answer. <laughs> no, they both they both are really important because you do I, all like, night. All right. With us <laughs> home and like us being inside all the time, like we don't really go outside. It's important to at least move your body, even if you don't go outside or like get some type of like exercise and movement. And also like to detach from social media and what everyone else wants from you, because you have to be able to pour into yourself first before anybody else gets any other part of you. So they're both really important, to be honest. Um, and Remy, you've done like an amazing job building a platform around speaking up about moments and places often when you were like out shopping, where you felt like you weren't represented in like the imagery or the sizing. Um, what really like pushed you to start this conversation or to build a platform creating space for these conversations? And how has that changed how you perceive yourself and the rest of the world? I think I've always just like had these frustrations around my size and shopping and it like became this difficult frustrating thing when it was like when it shouldn't be it just shouldn't be like that and I also felt very alone with having those thoughts until I had this platform and realized how many people feel the exact same way that I do when they're having these shopping experiences or struggling to find things that fit them it's like that should be an enjoyable experience so I think uh, if anyone who do hasn't followed me or doesn't follow me, like I never really planned for this to happen and to get such a, you know, big platform. And I'm so grateful that I have, but I really think it was like me even just making videos for my friends at first, never thinking people would see them of just like, again, speaking about those frustrations, about how like we feel like we have to look exactly like the model online and that we quite 
possibly will never look that way exactly what you know we're supposed to be and you know again just talking about my struggles and I put a little bit of humor into it to kind of lighten it all up a little um and you know the feedback I've gotten is so crazy um in a very positive way of just one you know building that community and realizing like we all no matter what size you are so many people feel the exact same way and are going through the same thing and it's like let's just keep talking about it and keep having these conversations because the more we're vocal about it it's starting to work brands are starting to listen and um you know i think that obviously inclusivity in fashion is very important to me and i'm hoping that there's a lot more of it in you know the next few months and so on so i just want to keep talking about it like i never thought that people would really like the conversation and get so excited about it but it, it, i mean i'm very passionate about it also so i think it's it's awesome to have something i'm passionate about but also like this many people listening and being a part of it it definitely comes across as like passion and in, in your content and just like it's very authentic like this is your experience but the fact that so many people have migrated towards your experience because they share it and you're like a voice for this community that's incredibly powerful and like thank you for just speaking thank out and you. Yes, amazing. And Darren, you've been very vocal as well about um, being an, a part of the community. Um, in where they are often mis or underrepresented. Um, underrepresented. Can you share with us about how that impacts your mental health and why this needs to change? You know, that's an interesting question for me because I've, um, you know, m my entire life I've been like the ambiguous one where like sometimes people pick me out as being you know asian american but you know a lot of the time it's like people just can't guess so i am kind of like oh we don't know what he is I for a million things um but i have realized like in my life too it's like when i've had you know when i have like let's say like a group of white friends my my asian heritage has always been like a topic of discussion like not saying i've been made fun of for it but it's always been like a oh, you're Japanese and it's always brought up, which I've always loved because I'm super proud of it. But then like when I've had a group of Asian friends, it seems to be the opposite where it's like my, you know, European side comes up. And so it's like, I never really fit into a box. And um, I can't say it's been like a huge struggle or, or deterrent for me. So like, I can't, sometimes I feel like, you know, um, a little bit shy to like, speak of it because I feel like you know sometimes I, don't, I feel like so, in some way people are gonna be like oh you're not you're not Asian enough to like really speak on this or or some people are like oh but you are so why don't you so it's like this weird trying to find like a box there but then I realized myself that there's a whole there's a whole um you know part of representation there itself like there's so many people that don't just fit into a box anyway and you know I have I have plenty of friends that are part Asian um more of a percentage than i am and, and some of them look more you know white than i do and it's always like this weird like where do you fit type thing um but in terms of like just representation of like asians americans in film and, and television i love where it's going right now you know it's um <clears throat> i mean i grew up watching crazy like you know jackie chan jet lee like all these things so like i always thought growing up like oh being Asian is cool because like, you know, what I was watching was like Asian men, like kicking people's butts on camera. And I was like, this is really cool. But you know, I, as I gotten older, I, I have seen and been aware more of like the stereotypes of it, of like just Asian culture in, in, in media. And um, I love where it's going right now. I think it's some, um, you know, you, you're starting to see like Asian American romantic leads. The, the, he's the guy that gets the girl. He's not just the, you know, attendant at the store or, or some like side caricature of, of, of a, uh, of a character. And, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's really important, not just for Asian Americans, but, you know, just for the fact that like you talk of like America and it's like the, being an American person is like, I think that's a definition that some people, everyone, it, it has a meaning when, when the meaning is there is no like color to it. There is no, like you can be an, an 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 Asian man with a thick accent, you know, from your your native country, but you're still an American. So 
that itself i think is what needs to be more addressed is like the american thing is not like the you know polo wearing cowboy whatever that's out in the field tending you know farm like that's that's kind of where where i'm going with it but um i don't know if i'm going on a rant but yeah you know it's 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 nice seeing the representation i'm proud to be a part of the movement and um i'm proud that i've been and you know i have so much i'm so thankful i've been like seen like accepted by the asian community in, in that capacity um it's opened up a lot of doors it's made me even more proud of my heritage and um i look forward to exploring it and you know being more immersed in it yes and that's that's so important because you are not only like taking a space um in a world where you're represented but you're also speaking out about like the complexities of your roles or like why you're in the seat you're in but you're also calling things out and i think that's so important to like evoke change because people have been so complacent for so long like yourself and remy you guys are like no like this this is wrong like we need to start talking about this and changing our voices are so powerful and these brands understand and know how imp how important and powerful our voices are so continue to just continue telling our stories because it's really it's dope to watch like it's, it's really cool to see like how things are shifting slowly but like they're they're powerful because i know people who watch you and listen to both of you they they see themselves in your story so shout out to y'all um and i want to just ask this follow-up question like how does representation affect your mental health or how do you think it affects the mental health of your fans just seeing you all on screen or just hearing the conversations you're having on your platforms you want to kick it off for me can you say the question again i'm sorry yeah. how does patient affect the mental health of either yourself or how do you think it affects the mental health of your community well representation in my like about size for me is that what yeah no i just feel like that's i mean the most important is like why you know I feel like people relate to me because I am the consumer like I'm on you know doing exactly what people are looking for so I'm like a larger girl just like going through you know everyday life and dealing with these things that all these other people are dealing with the same exact thing and I think that people just seeing that and being able, like I said, to have a platform where people can listen to that is helpful for all of them. Like someone having a larger body that has a voice and that people are able to listen to. Amazing, I agree. Same, same question. Yeah, same question. Word it again for me, I'm sorry. I was saying um, representation affects the mental health of your community. Yeah, so, you know, I, I was, I was thinking about that and it's like, you know, when I, when I said too, like, you know, it's like, again, I, I wasn't the kid that was like, oh, I wasn't seeing, you know, Asian American men represented. And then I felt downtrodden because of it a lot as a kid, because again, like I'm, I fit this ambiguous box, but I do remember now thinking back and looking like, oh, you know, I, I, I was actually scared. I wasn't going to be able to like become an actor because I, I would look online and like there were people I was looking at like I don't know like Channing Tatum like Brad Pitt Tom Welling like whatever at the time and it was like all these dudes are like six one and like white with like blue eyes and like they they had they're like this romantic lead and like there's Matthew McConaughey or whatever and I was I, w I was a little bit discouraged I was like man like I don't look like this I'm not in this box and like it really kind of messed me up for a while because I was like I, I guess I can't see myself doing that. Um, so I think it <clears throat> like the it's it's great for like, you know, representation in general. Um, I feel like people watch what we do as artists because they want, you know, they need an escape sometimes or a distraction from reality or just to feel good or, or to find like an inspiration to believe in themselves. You know, like there's nothing more beautiful than a kid watching like, you know, Spider-Man or like some type of superhero movie and then coming out of the theater and like they're like shooting their like little fake webs around. And it's like them thinking like I could be a superhero, like believing like I could be more than what I am and it inspires them and it, it, it gets the imagination going. And, and it's it's brilliant. I think that's what, what we make. That's why I do this. That's why I love it. Um, so to take it a step further and, and, and make it something that a kid, as he grows older, can really actually like see himself doing because of representation is even more beautiful. You know, I think it's very important. And I, I love, you know, 
being a part of that conversation and, and trying to move that forward. Powerful. You both are like, I don't know, I wish I was this like woke back in the day, but this is, this has been like a really, really hard topic. Like mental health is something that I wish we just spoke about for like, or sh shed a spotlight on for longer than May. Like, of course it's mental health awareness month, but I just want to empower everyone watching to like, just, Understand that your voices are powerful. Understand that your process is powerful and understand that these people who are on, on this live with me are changing and shifting culture for the better. And I'm so grateful to be here in conversation with them. Um, I'm gonna jump into a couple of questions. We have about 3000 proposals for Darren. Um, and then we have from, I can't pronounce the name. I think Carla A. Garcia, how do you, with people who talk down on you? I guess negative um, talk from peers or anyone that's just around you? Um. Um, I mean, it's very hard to being on social media. I feel like for me, and, well, I'm not going to answer for Darren, but I feel like we have obviously different, you know, he's an actor and isn't kind of probably staring at his screen and his phone screen all day. Me being on social media, it's really hard to not um you know look at the comments and the things people say and there's obviously you're never going to have everyone that likes you and agree with what you're saying and putting out there so there is you know definitely some negativity that comes with this and it does affect my mental health a lot i think just doing the best i can to try and look at the positives over the way fewer negatives that there are out there and the negative things that people are saying um because i know that i have a a purpose and I'm passionate about what I talk about and I know that it's doing some good in the world so I just have to keep reminding myself of that as hard as it can be um so yeah I mean I think I just have to remember that there's way more good than bad and um I'm you know happy to be doing what I'm doing um I'm I'm learning as I grow older that like one of the greatest a superpowers I think you can learn is to not take anything personally. <clears throat> so it's like when I, it's so easy, like, you know, when someone talks down to you and you get upset and you react, you're immediately giving them what they came to do and you're, they, they've won at this point, you know? So it's like, I'm, it's, I used to get so, been a, I, I'm still like a very sensitive person and obviously things still get to me. I'm not like impenetrable, but like it's made it a lot, a lot easier now when it's like, instead of looking at like, why did they say this to me? What am I lacking that made them say this? What have I done that made them say this? I look at people where I'm like, man, you must really be hurting to need to hurt someone else so much. And you know, and, and, and when, I, when I try to face it with empathy, like why what's wrong with you that you have that you feel the need to try and hurt me um and you approach it like that and you kind of like you know they're talking down to you but you in a way are looking down on them for doing it it kind of switches the roles so i really you know try to face it with empathy and try to face it with understanding of this is not me you're attacking this is a part of yourself you're attacking and i really pray that that part of yourself heals so you don't feel the need to do this to other people. And there's, it's, again, it's really hard, it's not easy, but with some practice, it becomes easier. And um, I think it's a power and tool to have, so. I, right. I think that it's awesome that, like the way you say that, I feel like you've been doing this a lot longer than me. And it's like, I'm just hoping that I grow a little tougher skin. Cause it's like, that's being honest is everything I, want to do on my platform so when people ask me things like this it's like all I could do is be honest and say like I'm still having a difficult time with it it's hard to again like see opinions from so many people different people in the world that just might not you know agree with what you're saying or you know might just talk down on you for being you and looking like what you look like it's hard to see that but I think the way you know, that's what I try, the way you explained it and how I try and think about it. Like, it's not about me, it's about them. So it's just, you know, I'm a sensitive person too. So it's like, I, you know, it just gotta, gotta roll with it and keep doing what we're yeah. supposed to be doing. People, people go for the throat sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't even know me, like, what have I done to you, you know? But again, it's their issue. You're doing what you're doing. 
And here's the thing. When they're commenting and saying those bad things, they're still watching you. They're still a fan. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. So, hey. It's all a, a reflection of them for sure. Those are some great answers. I'm like taking notes over here. <laughs> I'll do one last. And also like when people talk bad about you, like it's definitely a reflection of what they're experiencing. You just have to understand that they're way behind in their journey and you're at this point. So everything that Darren said is like perfect if you approach it with empathy and take yourself out of it, it really does help to like remove this thing a little bit, but I don't know, you can get a hundred positive comments and one negative and a negative will like haunt you in your dream. Yeah. Right. Ruin it, you know, if you let it. If you let it, exactly, exactly. Okay, we have time for one more question. Um, and this one is a bit layered, but I think you have the beautiful minds to answer this. This is from Steph, Tiny Dancer. What do you think of mental health in the workplace? How can we ensure work-life balance and making sure your managers or people you work with respect your work-life balance? Um, so, I mean, for me, I'm, you know, someone that I work at home and I, I'm alone doing what I'm doing every day. It's definitely different than when I used to work in like a corporate setting and, you know, be sitting in an office for, you know, 10 or so hours. But now it's almost more interesting being in a social media job because I genuinely feel that I work and my mind is moving 24 seven. Like it's, it's just constant. And, and I love that. I love being able to respond to all of my followers and like, you know, just, I love being on social media and again, having this platform, but I do, I'm learning now how important it is to have that balance and that like, I, you know, I do need to try and I've been trying different things. Like I'm trying to find what works for me, whether that's putting my phone away for two hours before I go to bed. So I'm not staring at it, you know, all night. Like that's hard for me. Like I just want to be so engaged with everyone. I feel like that's like my point of what I try and do. But like, you know, like it, it all of this then comes with, again, me maybe not sleeping or me working too much and overworking my brain and I do get exhausted and I think I'm really really trying now to just like honestly in the past month told myself like there's certain things I need to you know stand my ground with and make time for me I'm actually speaking obviously on mental health and stuff I'm very open about how I struggle with binge eating the past two years and I finally decided to do like a very um you know intensive six week pre-starting that's going to be taking up a lot of my time and my managers and everyone on my team is super on board with it and respecting that I need to like really just you know make myself feel a little bit better in order to give so much of myself to everyone else that that was a great answer and this is a wild question to be honest I'm like you know I'm going back to like when I was working like I've worked nine to fives. I've worked in a factory before and I've worked, I've worked as a, you know, where, where I had like a certain job where it was like, it, it, it's a hard answer because like, you know, some people have nine to five and it's like, if your manager calls you after that time, you're like, yo, like you don't have to pick up. But then there's other jobs where you're like, let's say you're trying to climb up the ranks and there, that person calls you, you want to answer and make a good impression because you want to be the person next in line for a promotion. Like I understand these things. So I'm trying, I want to answer this in a way where people aren't like, you don't get it. Cause you don't have that type of job, you know, but it's like, I think it's really about like, you know, when, when you have time to yourself, like, like I said, when I wake up in the morning, the first hour, I don't look at my phone last hour before I go to bed. I don't look at my phone really make those times about you and not, other people like don't make it about catching up with friends or phone calls per, like socially and or getting on social media like really make it about you reflecting on you and what you want and also like this may this again seems like a move some people are like yo but if i did this i would get fired but like let's say a manager or or someone is is advantage of your time and and asking you to do things that are off the clock and this and this and that um I would say if you know what you're worth, go out and get what you're worth and, and tell these, you know, stand up and say, listen, if you want my time to do these things, then pay me, you know, or talk to me during business hours respectfully. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think the worst you can get really is a no, 
And if you got fired for that, I apologize, but it's also probably not the job you want to be doing anyway. So maybe down the, down the line, it would be better for you. But I don't think any amount of um, money, any amount of success, any amount of promotions in your workplace are, are worth it if they are making you miserable. Because when you look back the, uh, later on down in life, you're, you're going to regret the times you spent miserable. <laughs> so. And I think a lot of that changed during the pandemic, too. Like, I do feel that people are able to have, you know, somewhat a little bit more. I can't speak for everyone, but like of this work life balance, because it, everything has changed. You know, people aren't sitting in their offices as often, you know, for 10, 12, whatever hours. Like, and I think that people are starting to stand their ground. And like, I think this even past year has been so, you know, mental health has been such an important topic on social media, just on TV, everywhere, wherever you look. So I feel like people are, you know, able to be like, I need this balance to make myself better and myself better in this job or whatever I'm doing. And I think people are doing it, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it's all about communicating like what your boundaries are. And then when people try to cross them, which they will, you just reinforce like, hey, remember we had that conversation last Tuesday? Like, <laughs> this is why we had that. So I think just communicating what you're experiencing and like why it's wrong, why it's maybe out of your job description, and then like circling back to those conversations and, and Yeah, you got to know when to put your foot down because if, if you're the person that is willing to do everything and anything for your employer, yeah, you may get a gold star, but most likely you're just going to be the person that they can, they know will do whatever they want, whenever they want. Yeah. So, and that's, can be a good and a good and a horrible thing, but most of the time you're just gonna. Absolutely, absolutely. So I want to thank you both for joining us for this special Mental Health Awareness Month conversation. I also want to remind viewers that um, Pink has launched the Pink with Purpose Project. It's the fourth annual Pink with Purpose Project, where ten young adults will be granted twenty five thousand dollars each to fund their dream project that falls under the pillars of people, purpose, and plan. And we are three of the judges. So yes, is, be, we've been very vulnerable with you. Like, please be vulnerable with us. And like, you can also enter and find more information at BS Pink on Instagram and on the Pink. On the pink. So, we're very excited to act. We're, we're really going to be looking through all your submissions. I'm excited about it. And we're going to, you know, be helping to choose the winners. So definitely apply. It's going to be very exciting. I'm excited ideas man yeah That's gonna be you know i cannot wait i'm very much looking forward to it so yes submissions they are open right yeah they're open yeah, for the 31st so you have a couple weeks to submit there's like a video submission there's a couple written questions it's like super easy um but we really like i'm excited to give away this money to people and help fund their dreams like it's so important and it's it's so impactful and i'm happy to be doing it with you too um I hope you guys have a great rest of your mental health awareness month. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for watching and checking in and tapping in from all over the world. I've seen the comments Thank from, you guys. Karen yeah, for all your from all over. Darren, you have about, I told you about 30 proposals. <laughs> a lot of love in the DMs as well. Um, people are just swooning over both of you. And thank you for the amazing work that you all are doing. Um, you too. <laughs> judgment day. <laughs> um, but have a great rest of your day and take care. You, you too. too. Thanks, Bye everyone. Guys. Nice seeing you guys. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. All right.